Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today, viewer questions. So before I get to some of you guys' questions, I'm going to uh, make a little announcement. I uh, per periodically, pretty much every year, do a viewer knife video. So I get uh, submissions from all across the board, guys that uh, watch our show, and uh, you know, just send in pictures of your knives. The higher quality the picture is, uh, the better lit it is, the, the sharper and crisper, the larger the image is, all of those will uh, really help determine what gets in. I'm not looking for the best knives, the worst knives, any of that, just good quality pictures. The thing that's really cool about the viewer knife uh, videos, and I always like doing them, is that you see a really wide range of, of uh, knives. I mean, some of them are guys that are just showing me their first knife, maybe kids, and they're frankly very, very simple, sometimes kind of primitive looking. And then sometimes I get uh, pictures of knives by really accomplished guys. So uh, all across the board, and I really like showing them off. So my deadline for submissions is pretty quick. I've let people know through Patreon and some other things. But if you can get them to me by the end of the year, uh, 2019, then uh, the video will come out sometime in the first couple days of 2020. And you can see what all the guys that watch this show are up to. All right, so my first question is from a viewer named Craig Wright. Uh, he said, I just watched your two-hour knife making video, and I'm curious if you have a specific drill bit that you used when drilling through a hardened or tempered blade. So Craig was hoping that I would share some specific brands with him and where I could, you know, where he could get them and so forth. Uh, so here's kind of my general little explanation about drill bits. Uh, there are three basic categories of steel that are used for drill bits. One is high-speed steel. That's the cheapest and least durable. Cobalt is kind of in the middle, and then carbide, which means actually tungsten carbide. Those are the most expensive and the highest quality, by and large, uh, but they're certainly the hardest. So if you want to drill anything that's been any kind of steel that's been hardened, you have to use carbide. I'm not going to say it's entirely impossible to use other drill bits, but you pretty much toast them as soon as you use them. So if you're looking to drill anything uh, that's already been hardened for whatever reason, the tang of a knife, anything of that nature, you got to use carbide. High-speed steel and cobalt, you can get those down at your uh, Home Depot, big box store, whatever, Lowe's, any place like that, uh, Ace Hardware. Those are all available just kind of universally. And to me, those are kind of a commodity item. I don't knock myself out trying to buy the highest quality on those. You can either resharpen them or you can pitch them and get more when they wear out. So if you're just drilling annealed steel or softer metals like aluminum and so forth, I personally prefer cobalt bits and I just get whatever house brand you can get down at, uh, at your big box retailer. Now, as far as uh, carbide bits go, you can spend enormous amounts of money on carbide if you want to. If you're drilling in an industrial setting, buying a $130 drill bit makes sense. For me, I don't do the kind of volume of drilling that makes that sort of thing necessary. So I typically buy kind of house brand carbide. Now, you can't go down to Lowe's and buy carbide. You have to get those, as a general rule anyway, from specialty suppliers of um, equipment for milling machines and so forth, uh, or from industrial supply places. So Granger, MSC, um, you know, companies like that, most of those are available online unless you live in a really large city or in a place that's got, you know, a lot of heavy industry, you're probably not going to have a local store that sells tons of carbide tooling. You know, like I said, want to drill really hard stuff, got to go with carbide. But don't go spendy and, you know, go nuts and spend $125 on a quarter inch drill bit. I wouldn't anyway. So another question here from a viewer named John Rosado. I was wondering if I screw up on my blade bevel in the early part of grinding, is it possible to use a hand file and correct this? So I love this because it brings up kind of a general point about any kind of craft. You know, there's, there's an old saying that uh, the difference between a master and a beginner is that the master knows how to fix his screw-ups. You know, I can't tell you that 
in any specific circumstance, oh yeah, you can absolutely you can absolutely go back and save this thing. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is to take that knife that you screwed up on and ditch it. You know, save your energy for something else. But a lot of times you make a small mistake and you can come back and correct it. And and I think John here is really right on the right track here because what I really recommend that you do when you make a big screw up is back up a little bit, take a breath, you know, examine the work, figure out if there's some way that you can still meet kind of the uh, design challenge that you're aiming for with that particular knife and still kind of conform to what you were aiming for. And a lot of times, if you're careful and you think about it hard, you can come up with an easy fix. Sometimes you can't. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, is this chef knife gonna be okay if I turn it into, you know, a paring knife or something? Uh, is it worth the effort or should I just ditch it and move on? That's just a judgment call you have to make. But backing up, slowing down, figuring out just how much material you need to remove to get it right, whatever it might be. It, it, the, the key point is just taking that big breath and slowing down a little bit and taking another run at it maybe in a slower way. And that's where, you know, just using a file instead of a grinder really is a great way to go. All right, so one more question from Bill Harder. Walter, how thick should I be targeting to get before heat treat? I've often heard that it should be about a credit card or 20 thousandths of an inch. And he says that he's using annealed 1075. Now there's no perfect answer for this. Uh, personally, I would say maybe a little thicker than 20 thousandths of an inch. That's typically going to be about the range that your final knife is going to be. Um, as you get better, you can make them thinner and thinner, closer and closer to the final um, size that you're aiming for. But, you know, me personally, I'd probably aim for 30 or 40 thousandths uh, for a carbon steel knife. Um, maybe a little bit closer to the final dimension if you're going stainless steel. So the reason for that is anytime that you're heat treating, you're raising the temperature of that steel and you're going to have some kind of carbon loss and that carbon loss is going to be a little more concentrated in really thin areas. So, uh, when you're doing uh, carbon steels, you're typically using a forge, open flames, and the carbon loss is gonna be a little bit quicker than stainless steel, which is typically gonna be uh, kept in some kind of neutral environment. You got stainless steel foil wrap around it or whatever, and so the carbon loss is gonna be slightly less. So as a general rule, I would probably go maybe 10 thousandths of an inch over whatever the final thickness that you're aiming for. It won't take too much effort to grind off that additional amount, and yet you still are covered so that you're not going to have too terribly much carbon loss and have an edge that's not going to hold up. Well, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, we're closing in on the new year. Happy holidays and uh, happy new year to you. Again, send me pictures of those knives if you're interested in being included in the end of the year uh, viewer knife video and uh, should have that out for you in the next few days. Thanks, and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.